We trying to get paid. Making money, making money, making make dollar, dollar. We trying to get y'all. paid. Making make money, making money, making yeah. save and invest. Stacking up checks, let's go. All 11 sectors of the market are down. The SPX is down over 2%. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, LaSalle Nungu. Make sure you press like on this video right now. It really helps my channel grow, and I really appreciate it. This has been a horrible back-to-back two days in the market to start off the week. Uh, You know, these European countries have had it even worse. France, Italy, Germany, even the UK now contemplating going back under mandatory shutdowns. U.S. coronavirus cases are up 300 percent in some cities. Stimulus, as we've already been discussing on this podcast, is a complete no go. The Democrats have done an incredible job of making the president look unable to really do anything about the economy and about coronavirus going into the elections. I've been incredibly disappointed these last uh, couple hours, folks. It's a real painful thing. You know, I've been on a streak, a winning streak of 10 straight trades. And yesterday I took my first L. Uh, And it's not something where I wanted to take the L. It's that my rules uh, mandate that I close a trade when certain levels are hit. My original trade will likely not be a losing trade. That's what disappointed me the most. You know, the market sold off so much it hit my stop, uh, which is 2x my uh, max gain, right? And then bounced 40 points and did absolutely nothing today. Did nothing today. So it basically just fucked me over and uh, went back higher. You know, went back higher. Again, I got to give the Democrats. Uh, round of applause. They played this very well. If they lose, I'll still give them an A plus for effort. Uh, all the stars are lining up. The economy looks like shit. The market looks like shit. The virus is back. All hands on deck for doctors all around the country. They're literally calling people out of retirement to help in certain parts of the country. Uh, this is just a dream come true for the donkey party. So, you know, let's see if they can take advantage of this good fortune. Make sure you go out and vote. If you haven't already, go out and vote on Election Day. Yesterday, the index hit a low of almost 2.3 percent or 650 points at the low. You know, it was a big shot for me because I told you guys that, look, you know, I've done the research. I've, I've paid LPL Financial to do the research for me. Right. I know what the probabilities are out here when I set those trades and when I put in my video course, no direction trading dot com, you know, what is going to win and what isn't going to win. And here's the data. Since 1928, the market has only moved that big or larger 50 times. That's, you know, 1928. That's 92 years. Right. So when we talk about how you know historically volatility in america is extremely low that's true right there's nowhere better to put your money because in america you have incredibly low volatility in comparison to many of your developing nations or even some of your you know your european nations right and that's that's you know besides the you know the point that we're also uh incredibly hard workers we're very incredibly transparent we have demographics that encourage growth it's a lot of other things to it but at the end of the day you know we do have historically low volatility so a trading style that i incorporate wins time and time and time again right in the united states of america but again the majority of the 50 times by the way were in the last 15 years Right. Last 15 years. So since 2005, you will not find a lot of volatility in the U.S. stock market before 2005. I mean, you had the Internet bubble, you know, and before that, 1987, which is what they bring up a lot. This generation, particularly, uh, you know, the Internet bubble is kind of for the most part self-inflicted. That was a mania. 1987, for the most part, that was a bit of a mania. Right. But I digress. You know, you're not going to find times of significant volatility in the United States stock market only in in spurts and pieces. Monday's price action was 
uh, in hindsight, very predictable, though. I, I got to admit that because if you look at the price action, it was clearly a co continuation of what we saw on the 19th, which was surprise, surprise, a Monday, right? The 19th was just a continuation of what we saw on the 13th, which happened to be a Tuesday. But, you know, those two days, Monday and Tuesday, tend to historically be also the most volatile days for the market. And in some instances, you may say Friday comes a bit close too, but for the most part, Monday and Tuesday are it. You know, so I'm going to start looking out and paying attention for Monday. I've always made it uh, a rule of mine never to trade. Uh, uh, you know, have an expiration be on a Monday because that's just the worst thing you can ever do is to have an expiration on a Monday. A lot of guys like to get suckered into that, but you know, you could really get hurt really hard having an expiration on a Monday. If I would have waited just 15 more minutes, right, I would have closed, I wouldn't have closed that trade, right? But the pain was getting so much. Again, plus my rules mandating that I get out the trade. What are my rules? Well, here are my rules. If I, again, sustain 2x my max gain, I'm out. Meaning, if I have a trade where I'm taking in $650, which is basically what I like to make every two days in the market, right? And I'm down $1,300, then it's a wrap. I'm out, I'm, I'm out the game, right? Now, what I did learn is that you know, I need to learn to take trades later in the day, especially if I'm going to be taking a trade on a Monday. I need to make sure it's late into, <clears throat> excuse me, into Monday for that Wednesday expiration. So I shouldn't be taking any trades before, you know, 12 in the afternoon at all. I had no business taking that, you know, that, that trade earlier that day. I think I posted it at like 10 or something and it literally went left hour, hour and a half later. All right, because if the market wants to go in a certain direction, it's going to tell you what direction it's going to go in before then, typically before 12 o'clock. If the market makers want us selling, then guess what? Through the charts over the last two years, you know, you'll have a very hard time finding a breakdown that started after 12 in the afternoon, right? And if you do find one, it happens to be a lot of time a Trump tweet, you know, or a, a devastating news release. Or uh, I did see also when, you know, you had a bomb go off in Iraq where, uh, you know, the oil just basically the oil field just got blown up or whatever. You know, those guys who may remember that event that happened to be late in the afternoon. So. Do they exist? Oh, yes, of course. You know, they're, they are, you know, those 600, 700 point sell offs. You know, and I've got to accept that and deal with it. You know, I've also thought about increasing my my max loss to 3x my max gain. So if I, you know, take in 600, then I'm not going to sell the trade until I'm negative. You know, what's that? Uh, that's 12, 1800, excuse me. Oh, wow. I don't know why I'm sure. $1,800. You know, but that's not cool, man. You know, that, that we're literally talking about almost two weeks of lost profit. If I were to do that, you know, I could make up a week easily with the trade, but two weeks, then now I'm putting pressure on myself. You know, my formula works. And my problem is that, you know, it is what it is. The rules mandate you get out, you get out. And I've got to accept that. I also learned that I've got to pay a bit closer attention to the VIX. If you look at the VIX yesterday, and I say this on my own podcast, but for whatever reason, I missed it. We opened elevated. We opened, you know, we gapped up yesterday on the VIX in the morning. That was the first warning sign. And then you see, as I mentioned, the explosive move at around 1030. And that remained strong up until three o'clock. Now, a day later, we've got no reprieve there. We're still at an elevated VIX level. And that means we could easily see, you know, another 2% lower from here. You know, crazy stuff. As I mentioned, all 11 sectors of the market are down. Uh, the worst being, guess what? 
energy. <laughs> Obviously, lockdowns are worse for those companies and uh, oil refineries. XLE is just, just being terrorized all year. I just feel sorry for anybody who's an energy trader. Uh, you know, hopefully they, they're all about their puts and, you know, selling calls because nothing is going right in energy right now. Uh, by the way, David Einhorn, if you don't know who he is, he's a fund manager. He's, I guess, a pretty big deal on Wall Street. He owns a fund called Greenlight Capital. If you don't know what a fund is, it's basically, you know, he's a money manager who owns this company that takes in money from wealthy people at a minimum investment. Typically, it's like $5 million. So no black people, uh, <laughs> unless you play ball or sing or rap. And he trades it for you, right, to make above average returns. And he's seeking to outperform the market. And when we say outperform, we're not talking about like two or three percent. He's trying to outperform the market by five, you know, ten times what the market is doing. He's 51 years old. His fund is a long, short value fund. And he has a personal net worth of over seven hundred million dollars. So. You know, I guess, you know, what he has to say is a pretty big deal. What he said today, which got picked up by CNBC and a lot of the other big financial news guys, even Josh Brown from CNBC made a, a whole video on it today. Check that out. Is that he called the top in tech stocks. He says that the top was September 2nd and that is basically a wrap from here. And we're just going down for the rest of the year. So. We'll see what the market has to say about that. Looking at the futures market, it's too early to tell, uh, but we're in the red slightly right now in the futures market. But again, it's it's you know it's too early to tell. But I mean, we are down half a percent right now after hours. But I don't make a judgment on the futures until 8 a.m. because after 8 a.m., you know the futures market takes on a life of its own. You know you'll see the market in the red and then 8 a.m. happens and you'll see the market recover 400 points you know cnbc comes on and it's just we're, we're, we're red to green all over again you know what i mean straight up uh, look at what zoom did today uh the 27th incredible day for zoom remember so many traders were looking for the you know the reversal trade you know from momentum to value and when I say value, we're talking about stocks that have been completely trashed by COVID. Some of you may remember uh, my Red Robin trade, RRGB. Look at it. It's virtually gone nowhere. Live Nation. I was so excited about that. Right. Outdoor concerts, indoor concerts took a dump. All right. The, you know, the small business money isn't going to be coming in anytime soon either. Look at Visa, ticker V. That took a dump. Uh, you know, pay attention to a very important level tomorrow, 3350. I expect that to be support. If we break that, something is really, really wrong here, folks. And things are going to get very, very ugly. Very ugly. I was talking to somebody to the other day and I said, I think Monday, because election day is on a Tuesday. I think Monday could be a 3% day next week. Really? I, I think Monday of next week, we could lose two and a half, three percent 3% the day before the election day. I think there are people on Wall Street. I think there are people in very high places who would love to see that happen. I really do. Uh, again, COVID is out here, folks. It's back and it's, you know, raging. And a lot of the stocks that we thought would be turning around here uh, going into the holidays are not going to be seeing that kind of love, folks. So continue fighting and continue following and tracking the market. Tomorrow is another trading day. Trade well.